Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In this video, I'm going to move on slightly with the multiplayer basics. Um, obviously, I've done a bit more research and I'm learning more about multiplayer. So I thought I'd just pass it on. Um, so basically, what I want to cover today is sort of providing information to the server uh, to make certain systems work better or, or work at all. Um, so an example of that would be a line trace. So what I've got is a, a system where uh, we, we can line trace. Now that's great, uh, but the server needs to know um, where to send the line trace. And effectively the server is doing the line trace for you uh, and then returning the results um, of what it might have hit. Um, so then you can set up uh, then a multiplayer line trace system. So you can see here we're getting this um, ouch you hit me on, on the on the screen. So that's actually a server response saying uh, ouch you hit me. Um, yep. And then also what we can do is using the similar system that we made in the first video where we can spawn cubes. Um, what we can do is we can do the same system basically, but then we can convert that into a projectile. Um, I'm not going to cover the projectile too much, um, but I will go over the blueprint which made it. Um, it's just there's a, there's a lot involved with setting up the collision profiles and stuff like that. Uh, and I don't want to get too lost in that. I want to focus on just the multiplayer bits. So with that being said, let's jump into the project and let's see how it's made. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're, we're going to set up just a basic line trace, see how that doesn't work as expected, and then what we'll do is we'll make the necessary changes to make it work. Um, so for the line trace, um, I'm going to use my left mouse button just as a hard-coded default. Uh, I'm going to do a line trace by channel, so I'm going to pick that. Then we're going to need a starting location. So typically what I like to do is get the camera manager, so get the player camera manager. Uh, which is basically going to return the active camera for your player or player index zero, which is which will typically be yourself. Um, then what we want to do is get the actor location. Um, that's going to be the actual physical location in the world. Uh, and that's going to be our start location. So effectively, the camera is our eyes. So get our actor location for the eyes. And then what we need to do is get the, oops, spell it right, get the forward vector um, of our camera. Wait, so it's going to be get actor forward vector. Uh, and effectively, that's just going to say this actor, the camera, uh, which way is the forward direction for it. And then because that's not got any distance involved in it, we're going to uh, multiply that by a float value. So I'll convert this. Um, so I'll do a multiplication, convert the bottom pin to a float. Um, any number here will do. Um, so I'm typing in 1,500, so that's which way am I facing and 1,500 units in front of that um, direction. Then what you want to do, because that's technically just an offset, is add these two together, your starting location and your uh, sort of like end location, and, and that combines the two together to make an end location. So this is just a very basic line trace that you could put on any game, um, but it's not yet set up for multiplayer. But what I'll do is... Um, this line trace, we should see that it'll hit our character. So that's that's the the whole objective. So you can see we're actually getting a line trace. Absolutely great. It's hitting things in the world um, and it's hitting our character. But um, this is not necessarily the right way of doing it because the, the server's not really aware of what's happening. So what you should probably do, um, the, the, the better way of doing it, is we need to turn this into a event, uh, a server, a replicated event. So what we want to do is do a custom event. And I'm just going to put um, send line trace, just like that. And effectively what you want is you want to, whoops, let's just get rid of that. We just want to connect that to that. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll pull all this information down under here, bring the line trace down. And from the left mouse button, then we'll just do send line trace, just like that. Now, this send line trace, we need to convert it to a replicated event. So under replicates, change that to run on server, uh, which then you can see that your event up here has also changed to, uh, this is replicated on the server. 
um, and then you can see that the trace in uh, sorry the, the the vector in and the end vector uh, are all set up as normal and what you'll notice now is when you go to fire you don't get anything so this event is replicated on the server however what the server is seeing is you're asking it to get the actor location now because it's run on the server it's trying to get the actor location of effectively itself which if we did um a string here and used the out hit and break that and asked it to tell us what you've hit so let's just drag this over here so if we hit an actor um get its display name just like that plug that in and let's just compile and play let's just see if it comes up here so we're hitting SM cube. Now, if I look around, it's just saying SM cube. Now, that's because the server, um, effectively, it doesn't really have a body to it. So my theory at this point is that it's firing from its location, which I assume would be um, zero, 0 in the world. So it's likely to be in this bottom corner down here. Oh, so you can see that the, the line trace is firing from from zero zero and it's just going forward so it's just going down the edge of the map which i can't quite get the camera to to run but you can see that that's going down the edge of the map there so the sm cube that it's hitting is actually the floor so realistically what it's doing is it's doing this line trace but it's taking itself its own location and working from that we don't want that we don't want that at all what we do want instead is we need to tell the server here's the here um when we press fire we want to effectively say get the get this actor our player get its location and its forward vector and then use that to create the line trace on the server um so what you can do is let's disconnect these two just like that and let's drag this back up here just like so and what we need to do is we need to create sort of like um, an, an input on this event. So we can input this actor's location and input our start location, uh, start and end, uh, to, to send that to the server. I hope I'm not talking in riddles here, but what we can do is if we drag our start vector onto our, um, our custom event, our send line trace, you can see that it says add pin node. So if you let go, you've now created an output on your on your or an input effectively on your event. So if you do the same for end, and then if we come back over here, you can see now where we're calling this send line trace, it's it's expecting these inputs. So now we can do the actor location into the start, and we can do the sort of effectively the end location there. So what it's doing now is on the um on the player side, on the client side, we're working out which actor to get, which is going to be our player, uh, and then we're sending that information to the server. Whereas before, effectively, anything here, all of this bit, is all server side, because we're telling this event to run on the server, which in fact effectively runs the line trace on the server, which meant that the get actor location was of the server whereas on this side everything that goes into this call into this send line traces is client side so all of this is client side so we work out on this side this is our player this is our player's camera uh, this is the direction our players facing or the camera and then we're sending that information to the server so the server already knows right so you want it from where the player is to where the end result is going to be so now if we hit compile and we play now on the server what you'll see is that line trace is being compiled by the server because you can see the response at the top is saying server sm cube or whatever we hit um, is working as we expect so what you can do with that, obviously what we're doing there is we're effectively passing the information to the server, which was the main point of this video. Let's get rid of all that junk. So there's your line trace in a nutshell. 
So effectively, setting up the projectile is pretty much the same at this point. Um, what I've gone and done is I've made a projectile um, sort of blueprint. Uh, nothing too interesting about this. I've just copied what you'd expect from the first person template. I've done a, a sphere collision. Uh, I've put then a static mesh of a sphere inside it just for the effect. Added a projectile movement, set the initial and max speed to 3000, and then set the velocity to 3000 on the X, so it's forward. And the only thing really on this is when you detect a hit, you apply damage and then destroy yourself. Um, I've not done the add impulse and stuff like that, which you'd expect on the FPS template, uh, because I really don't, don't need it uh, for, for, the, for this example. Um, obviously what you need to do is you need to make sure that you've got sort of your projectile to block stuff you can go into your project settings and set up an ob a, 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 an object type of projectile and have it defaulted to block um you need to make sure on your character that your character's mesh um is actually going to block projectiles um and that you can generate hits so i don't want to talk too much about the collision side of things because that's not what this video is about but um if you do want to make a projectile system you need to make sure all of these things are enabled and that's pretty much it so here we have the spawn projectiles and it's pretty much exactly the same as the line trace so what i've done is effectively if i hold shift and left mouse just so it's different from my line trace we're then going to uh, trigger this spawn projectile event which is replicated to the server uh, and because of that what i've done is i've gone and got the actor's um eye viewpoint which is just a slightly fancier way of of getting the location of your your face or your camera um yep so i use that for the rotation just to make sure that my projectile is always going um, in the in the sort of the way that the camera is looking rather than the actual physical character but effectively all i've got is um, i'm spawning a projectile uh, which is spawn actor of class select your projectile which then it spawns the the projectile uh, it requires a transform which i've just split um, so effectively what you would normally see would be this i've just split it because the scale i'm going to leave at one to one I'm going to use the rotation that I fed in here from the actor's view eye point. And then the spawn location is effectively like a mini line trace um, setup where I've just got a starting location. Which way am I facing? I've added 40 to it because for a projectile, it collides with things. So if you fire it from your exact location, it's effectively going to spawn inside your character's body and that won't work. Uh, so I've just added a bit of an offset to it so it spawns outside the character and then we trigger it. So if we go ahead now and run uh, this again, so obviously we've got this multiplayer setup. If I hold shift and click like that, you can see got, there's a projectile coming out of my character and we're getting um, a server response saying, ouch, you hit me. Uh, and then obviously this is now a physics object so it can collide with all the things in the world and yeah that's pretty much it to be honest at this point so um i'm having a bit of fun here whoa that, that's pretty much it at this point i don't think there's anything else really to touch over um yeah so that's basically sending it information via events so you've got to sort of split your mindset here a little bit of um stuff that happens on the character how much of that infinite information needs to be sent to the server for the server to be able to do uh, what it's expected to do so if you get in an actor's location if you get in a, uh, the location of yourself um, you need to send that information to the server because the server's effectively going to get its own location if you just use that node raw um uh, without sending that information I hope that makes sense. I don't want to drag this on any longer. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, please feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know why. Um, all comments are replied to. So, um, you know, if you want to just let me know your thoughts, uh, feel free to do so. 
Uh, Discord server link down below if you want to sort of have a chat or if you need any help with anything you can send screenshots and videos over there it's a bit easier than commenting through YouTube. Um, yeah that's pretty much it so thank you for watching and I'll see you in another one. Bye.